This is chapter 10, video 4, and we're going to be going over section 10.4, which is on compound events. So compound meaning more than one event happening at a time, okay? So our first target here says that we're going to use diagrams, lists, and tables to determine all the possible outcomes of an event or a compound event, more than one thing happening at a time, okay? So we're going to go over examples of each of those. And then we're also going to use the fundamental counting principle to help us get the total number of different combinations that there could be, okay? We'll go over examples of that. And our final target here is to calculate the probability of different compound events, okay? So take a minute to fill in your targets. Pause if you need to. All right, so some vocab. A compound event, like I said, is more than one event happening at once. So it could be um, spinning a spinner and drawing a card, or rolling a dice and um, flipping a coin, or any, any different compound events, right? Picking a pair of socks and picking a pair of shoes. Those are compound events. Sample space is a way of showing all of the different options or combinations that you could get for a compound event, okay? So we're gonna talk about tree diagrams, tables, and lists. And it will be on your quizzes and your tests um, to show the sample space, right? To kind of list out or demonstrate what all the different options or combinations are. And then FPC, Fundamental Counting Principle. Um, the name isn't as important as just knowing how to use it. So that's the method that we're going to use to just find, to count, to calculate how many different combinations there would be for any compound event. Okay? So, finding the sample space, right? You need to write down that that means showing all the combinations, showing what they are. Okay? So it's not just a number, it's not just counting them. It's finding them all. So, a few ways we can do that. The first one we'll look at is called a tree diagram, okay? So let's say you were ordering a pizza. You can pick thin crust or stuffed crust. You could pick Hawaiian, Mexican pepperoni or veggie. And then you could pick either regular or spicy sauce, okay? So, a tree diagram means, and I'll see if I can move this up a little bit so we have more room. A tree diagram, means you kind of start with your first options, right? We can pick thin crust or stuffed crust. Right, we're talking about pizzas. Then after that, each of those could be Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, or veggie. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna abbreviate these. You can abbreviate them on your paper too. Pepperoni or veggie. Hawaiian, Mexican, pepperoni, or veggie. And we kind of make it where there's rows or levels here. And then we could pick either regular or spicy. Regular, spicy, 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 regular, spicy. Right? Regular, spicy. And I could keep going. I know mine are kind of running together here, but you get the idea. Okay? All right, so looking at this, I wanna point out a couple things. There were three different kind of choices we had to make. So I have three levels, one, two, three. So that, there are three places where it branches, okay? And also, if I count this bottom row, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. There are 16 different pizzas we could come up with, right? I could get thin Hawaiian regular, thin Hawaiian spicy, thin Mexican regular, thin Mexican spicy, right? And you can kind of follow the different branches of your tree to give you all of the different combinations, all right? So that's a tree diagram. What about just a list? All right, you could get vanilla chocolate, Neapolitan, butter pecan, or mint chocolate chip in either sugar or waffle cup. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five different flavors. So I could get waffle cone, and again, you can abbreviate. Waffle cone vanilla, waffle cone chocolate, 
waffle cone Neapolitan, waffle cone butter pecan, and waffle cone mint. Chocolate chip. Okay? And then I could list the same things again for the sugar cone. Sugar cone vanilla, sugar cone chocolate, sugar cone Neapolitan, sugar cone butter pecan, and sugar cone mint chocolate chip. Okay? So that's a list, right? We listed out all the different combinations, and you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five for waffle cones, five for sugar cones, and that makes 10 different ice cream combinations, okay? So that's an example of a list. What about a table? Okay, this one says how many different ways can you roll a dice and flip a coin? Well, let's make a table of all the different combinations. So over here, there's my coin, right? I have heads and tails. And the other part of my table will be all the different things I could roll on a dice. A one, a two, a three, four, five, or six. So now if I finish my table, and you need to copy this down on your paper, your table would show you that you could get a one and a heads, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, six and head, or all those same numbers with tails, okay? And looking at your chart, your table, we see that there are 12 combinations, 12 different possible outcomes for rolling a dice and flipping a coin, okay? Pause if you need to catch up on any of these. We're going to move on and talk about the fundamental counting principle, okay? So you could abbreviate it. Really, it's just important that you know how to use it. So the fundamental counting principle, and you should write this on your paper, is a way of finding the total outcomes, or you might think of this as um, the total different combinations. Whenever you have a compound event, okay? So this is showing me that I could calculate the total number of outcomes. So in this case, I'm looking at M happening, N happening, and P happening. Three different events. It could be just two different events. It could be 18 different events. What's important is that you take how many ways the first event can happen and multiply that by how many outcomes or different things, um, different possible outcomes for the second event happening and multiply that by how many different outcomes for the third event happening, okay? If you only have two events, then you would, right, stop there. How many ways can this happen? How many ways can this happen? And you multiply them together. So this just tells you whatever your events are or however many events you have, you would simply count up the number of ways or the different outcomes for each of those things and then multiply them together. All right, so here's an example. If I'm going to a restaurant and they have, uh, they make sandwiches, right? So they have three different breads to choose from, four different condiments, five different meats, and three different cheeses to use to make your sandwich. Well, we could do a tree diagram or a list or a table, but that would be a lot of work. If I just want to know how many different combinations there are, I'm simply going to use the fundamental counting principle. And that says multiply them together. So this option or this event has three outcomes, four outcomes, five outcomes, three outcomes. So pick up your calculator and we're just going to type in three times four times five times three. So do that quick. You should get that. 180 different sandwich combinations you could make. Okay. Uh, restaurant B. They have four breads, three condiments, seven meats, five cheeses. 4 times 3 times 7 times 5, that would give me 420 different sandwich combinations. Or restaurant C, you do this one, okay? Type that into your calculator. How many different sandwich combinations here? Well, 7 times 6 times 8 times 9, 3,024 different sandwich combinations. So I can calculate that without having to list them or count them or um, like do a tree diagram or a table or anything like that. If I'm just looking for how many different combinations, I'd use the fundamental counting principle.
Okay, so how about when I flip three dimes? Well, notice that this asks me for how many outcomes, but also the sample space. So I also need to show a true diagram or a list or a table. All right, well, three dimes. Let's do the fundamental counting principle first. Every time I flip a coin, there's two options. So when I flip the first coin, I can get heads or tails. When I flip it, the next coin, I can get heads or tails. And when I flip the third coin, I can get heads or tails. Well, two times two times two is eight. So we should come up with eight different combinations or eight different outcomes here. Let's see, I'm gonna do a sample space. I'm gonna do a tree diagram. So when I flip a coin, I could either get heads or tails. And then when I flip my next coin, I could get heads or tails from each of those. And when I flip my next coin, I could get heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails. All right, so let's copy that down. Now, again, notice that I have three events. So my first event, my second event, and my third event, okay? And again, if I count the bottom row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that gives me total number of possible combinations there, okay? All right, so C and D, we can just use fundamental counting principle. So I want you to practice these. This first one is asking you for how many different photos could you come up with? Well, when I look at the size, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different options. The finish, one, two. The edits, one, two, three. Well, if I just want to know how many different pictures I could make, six times two times three. Okay? You do this one. So pause, come up with how many total different combinations there are for buying a new laptop and then hit play when you're ready. Well, three times two times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven should give you 42. Okay, so now going on to the probability of a compound event. Well, again, that compound event is more than one thing happening and we find it just like we're used to finding probabilities, right? Number of favorable outcomes divided by number of possible outcomes. So this is why we have to be able to find the sample space or use the fundamental counting principle to get this total number of outcomes for the bottom here, okay? So write that down, pause if you need to. All right, so rolling a dice and flipping a coin. Well, remember, we already just did this and got this table here. So if I think about that, or I'm looking at my table, or right, six options times two options, I know that there's going to be 12 different combinations here. So what's the probability of rolling greater than four and flipping tails? Well, greater than four would be five or six and flipping tails. Well, it looks like two. So two out of the possible 12 is one sixth. Rolling an even and flipping heads. Well, even in heads, even in heads, even in heads. Okay, that's three out of that possible 12. And I would simplify it to one fourth is the probability that I get an even and flip heads. Rolling less than six and flipping tails. Okay, well, less than six and flipping tails would be these five out of the 12 possible outcomes. So there's my probability, okay? Here we go. We only have a minute left and I want you to get some practice here. So I want you to do B. That goes back to our example where we flipped the three dimes. So we have the tree diagram there, try those ones. And then rolling two dice. We have this um, rolling two dice we haven't talked about yet, but there are six outcomes on your first dice, six outcomes on your second dice, so 36 possible outcomes. So pause here and try these ones and we'll go over the answers. All right, I got these just from counting from my tree diagram, the outcomes that work. And then this next one, the probability of two sixes, only one way that can happen. And then I came up with the probability or the ways I could roll a one, a two, or a three, and that was three out of 36.